All right, so let's uh, get this capital committee meeting going tonight. September what, 9th or 10th? 10th, 2018. Uh, I don't know if we have any official business to go through first. So I think we're pretty good. We have a quorum tonight, which is awesome to see. Thank you guys for coming. Um, and we can just roll right in. Um, I don't know, can you guys do a coin toss before the meeting here to see who goes first? You can go first. Either way is fine, yeah. Marlo, you want to go first? And sure. So Marlo asked if he could just come, even though he was here, I don't know, a couple months ago, but we did not have a forum, uh, and he kind of went through a bunch of stuff that they <coughs> need, you know, for the next 10 years, or a capital plan for the next 10 years. Uh, but he wanted to just go over some specific things, I think, tonight to address, you know, some needs that are critical in the next year and try to aid in that transition, you know, to the next DPW director, so, okay, I, mean, I if think. You, if you want, I can hit the main bullet points, and if there's any questions after, you know, um, <clears throat> we can start with the, the actual highway division uh, vehicles. So um, what one, uh, what, what are you looking off of right now? Do you I have, have your own sheet? Yeah, the one that one right there. there, okay, yeah. Because we can, I don't know if you have that one. We can look at just fiscal 19, or do you want to go out? Well, I was going to give a quick okay, synopsis ahead. of how I'll stop from a five year to ten year. No, that's okay. Go ahead, yeah. Um, so, as we all know, we went from a five to ten year capital plan. Uh, it was pretty easy to figure out with the vehicles. Um, as I've stated in the past, your smaller vehicles tend to 10 to 12, 13 years. Uh, your larger dump trucks, uh, 25 year range, and heavy equipment, 20 to 25 years as far as. Um, life cycle so um, in, in the, re the recent past couple of years um, we've aligned ourselves to, to where we're beginning to really start a good um, responsible uh, vehicle uh, capital plan in my opinion um, that, that follows a lot of very good templates that's out there in the DPW world um, a few vehicles have gotten you know pretty far over in age but I had to push them out only so, so that we wouldn't have you know, 350,000 do like this year and next year put together or even next year. So uh, I kind of move some vehicles around that I know I can get another two years out of hopefully or, or three years or, or whatnot. So, um, so you see on the capital plan, it's a 2001 F550. Uh, um, it says 450, but it's supposed to be an F550. Um, again, we're getting into that 17 year range uh, to 20 year range and that's a medium duty truck. Uh, replacement cost uh, 90,000 uh, if we stick to this type of capital plan we should get more money for that particular truck before it gets to the point where we get nothing for it uh, towards trade so more than likely we get a better trade or we be get a better um, uh, bid on it than that 90,000 can drop off to potentially 75 or 80,000 uh, and then we have a, a dependable vehicle back in the fleet with a replacement that's kind of what the philosophy is and the theory how this keeps turning over. We have dependable equipment all the time. We can get a little more money for them when we turn them over. Um, so in the long run, it, it technically saves money to the town. So that's basically the, the only request of this year. Uh, you'll see um, there's a 95 International, the second in line dump truck. I pushed that off. Um, we're actually four years, but not, I think it'll be four years beyond the 25 year life cycle. So, again, that'll be up for next year. Um, and then uh, we have a highway loader three years out, 2021. We place a 95 John Deere, which is beginning to uh, nickel and dime us, so to speak, here and there. It's breaking down more frequently. Again, it's, it's getting beyond that life cycle um, to where you start getting into the $30,000 repairs and stuff like that when you lose the, the uh, more critical components of that machine. Um, and what I did was, I, like I said, I pushed everything out. Uh, and it was really kind of funny that when I arrived here, I, I have some of the smaller vehicles showing up at the end of the tenure that, I, that we did this year. So, uh, But that's the cycle I, I think that we, we should you know, stick to. And then, you know, my successor, um, 
probably will have the same theory. Like I said, this is a pretty good template that, that DPW directors strive for out there, um, and, and it saves the, the community's money. So um, we'll go from there on the vehicles. What's the lifespan on that for $90,000 F450? Uh, that, that one's up around the 15 to 16, 17 year range, so we're a little lower on it now. We're going over the, the one I'm requesting this year. Yeah. Yeah, somewhere around. Yeah. It's a medium duty truck, so it doesn't fall into the 10 to 12 year. You're looking at a 15 year span. I know that particular vehicle, we, we put some fairly good money into it last winter and going into winter. So the new one will go another 15 to 17. Yeah. <laughs> These particular vehicles, as a side note, they've just redesigned, and most of them are, uh, most of the vehicle is, is made out of aluminum now. So uh, with that being said, the corrosion aspect of what we do for a living in the winter, um, uh, if it's properly maintained as far as the actual tin work and the body work on the truck should last longer. So. Thank you. Yep. <coughs> Thank you. So infrastructure, I had repair gable ends on the highway garage. I think um, that may have been a double up with the municipal building committee. David, if I'm remembering right. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the gable ends of the building, it's been on the radar since I got here. Uh, the upper part of it, it's not vinyl sided above the block, the gable ends. Uh, the wood siding, uh, which I think is T111, is just starting to rot. So we'd like to get the rot replaced and, and vinyl side that off, the gable ends for more of a permanent free um, uh, deal there that way there and we don't have water running in the next couple of years because it is starting to rot uh, the upper gate lines so that coupled with the the new um, metal roof they put on a few years back will, will help sustain that building uh, exterior wise for a long time um, highway garage design um, this is the beginning stages of, of taking a look at how we're going to want the the DPW to, to look going forward as far as uh, the existing trailers. Uh, I mean, we all know the story. A couple of them have been there more than 20 years. Um, one of them is beginning to de deteriorate to the point where I put some money into it. Um, and this is kind of the, the area where we were going. Uh, it's been talked about by the MBC uh, to go with a new double wide down there. Um, but I think it should be a larger discussion of, of how we want to proceed down there. You know, if we want to invest over 100,000 in another double wide trailer or do we want to proceed with a smaller building down there to handle the, the administrative because that's basically what's in the trailers. Uh, one of the small trailers is, a, is, is the break room, very small trailer for the guys, highway guys. Um, I would venture to say at this point we'd be looking at something to handle the administrative and the, and the, and the break room type thing. Um, We've finished in closing the pole bar with doors and whatnot, so all, all the, the front line equipment is under cover now and protected, um, so that's a big help. Um, so, you know, we can look at a new building from in perspective from, from two phases, you know, do we expand the highway garage later to get the stuff that's in the pole barn inside of the warmth? Um, That'd be the second phase. The first phase is we're going to take a look at the trailers because they're, like I said, they're they're fastly deteriorating and um, they're they're the most inefficient thing you can possibly work out of or live out of, to be quite frank. Um, little little side story. Um, this summer we, we saw how hot it was. There's three ACs running in my trailer and it was 86 degrees in there. So uh, they're literally tin cans. So. Um, that's the other way of looking at it. I mean, these things are so inefficient that we're just pouring money out the, out the roof for this thing. So um, that's it on the, the actually the general side. Um, any questions on that? Sure. The um, the trucks that you're proposing here, we just you just got one, and it was at eighty thousand for five fifty. What that we just bought is that a different truck than the ninety thousand dollar truck? No, that, that's been the standard price in case we have to plumb one for an extra sander or something or a spare truck as a sander. Um, the one we just got, we came in right at 80, 89 and some change. Oh, 89? Yes. Oh, okay. There's $346 left. Um, the one we just took delivery on from the, from the last cycle. <coughs> okay. okay. 
um, move on to sewer. So sewer line assessment, I have the, the first uh, first in line sewer line assessment. We just recently went through a complete, um, well, let's back up a little bit more. We had an emergency lining project that I think hopefully everybody's aware of that we went through this summer. Uh, we inspected the 2,000 feet of line in the area of the, the mall and, and to be quite frank, a lot of it was ready to collapse. We don't know how it hadn't collapsed. Um, so we were able to, to line that 2,000 feet for uh, right around $90,000. Um, it's about an eighth of the cost of excavating and replacing the pipe from, from top to bottom. Um, most of our pipe is asbestos cement, which now under regulation has to be removed when they put new pipe in the ground. So that increased your cost by minimum one third to one half to remove asbestos pipe and properly dispose of it. So um, the key is the liner is good up to 100 years now. Uh, if we can line the existing AC pipe in place, it's, it's a home run for the town of Hadley, being we have such a large percentage of AC water and sewer pipe. So we went through the, the process um, along Route 9 because that project's coming up in three years. We're looking at um, uh, about another 14,000 feet of pipe that we inspected in camera. But the good news is there's nothing emergency left out there. Um, but it's eroding and it needs to be addressed. Um, so I broke this down to basically cover, we have 21 miles total of sewer line in town. I broke this down 30,000 a year for um, assessment and lighting to get through um, all our mileage of pipe um, in the next 10 years, 10 to 12 years. Um, stuff that we can line, we can get it lined. Do you have a, just a side question, do you have a plan laid out for what ones take priority for inspection? I'm working, uh, I'm working my way this way. The next priority is the part of Route 9 that's already been redone in Middle Street. Middle Street's the main trunk line, the okay. pump station one. Mm -hmm. that, we came all the way from the malls, um, well, Jiffy Lube to right here at Middle Street in, in behind um, the American Legion and, and where the new senior centers proposed. Mm -hmm. That line comes through and, and, and ties in right in front of Dunkin' Donuts. Okay. And then it hits the main trunk line and goes all the way down to pump station one to the plant. Okay. Uh, so we left off right out here. So I want to pick up the Middle Street section, which mm -hmm. is a very so large line. So that would line. be next year, basically? Or um, well, if the assessment comes through, mm -hmm. uh, that'll be definitely part of the inspection and, and potentially lining some of the... So for that $30,000, you get about that, what did you say, 2,100 feet? The, the, the camera got yeah. about 12,000, 14,000 feet. 12 to 14,000 for inspection, that 30,000. Yeah. Okay, okay. Right. About three miles a year, more or less. Yeah, two and a half, three miles. Yeah. Um, so the other, the other okay. part of this, this propose, this, this ask is, uh, I put in for a, a, a mass works grant. When we should be hearing back in of October, I put in for a seven hundred thousand dollar grant to line everything we inspected on Route Nine. Uh, be a home run for the town if, if we got that grant. Uh, route 9 is kind of, most of Route 9 is off our plate when the expansion or the reconstruction happens. With the exception of a few sag areas in the lines, you can't line them, they got to be replaced. And the E Street intersection is pretty messed up sewer-wise, because um, they went under pipes and over pipes, oh, yeah. the, the sewer, that, that has to be reconstructed. So the, 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 basically the million dollar capital, if we could get everything aligned, drops to about $300,000 when they do the reconstruction for sewer. Uh, so that, that lining money, uh, that grant would be a huge for, for Hadley. Mm -hmm. um, with that being said, it's all, they can go ahead and do the reconstruction and, and just because we had in line, it's not going to affect anything. We have to go through that report. I have the full report of the office electronically and in, in book form. Um, and nickel and dime as we go, line those areas that, that look the worst, that are starting to erode the worst, I guess. Erosion's the word. Mm -hmm. uh, on an AC pipe on the inside. Um, so we're kind of in a holding pattern on it. If that grant comes through, then, you know, that'll be a good thing. Okay. Um, so the, the, the 30,000 was actually, per year, was actually the actual assessment of the lines, the camera, the TV, the flushing, the cleaning. Mm -hmm. Now I have in here, again, this is pending, um, 
but sewer lining and repairs, the actual lining and, and actually anything we find that we have to dig up and, and replace, you'll see that I put $100,000 in there for the next 10 years. Um, you know, again, the, the grant would play into some of this. Um, my successor would probably have to adjust these numbers and take a look at, take a look at it going forward. Um, and again, these are placeholder numbers, thinking if, if we do $30,000 of assessment, it might be 100000 for excavating and lining in a year, whatever we assess. I kind of want to bring that, that assessing a section will be one year ahead of the, the previous year that we could be doing the lining and the, and the repairing, so we're not, we don't have all the, the projects log jammed into the busiest, busiest part of the construction season. That was my theory on that, but yeah. thinking. Um, there were maybe years where we're a year ahead and say, geez, we didn't find anything wrong. You know, there's a lot of plastic in that section. They have to line just a few sections. You know, we can drop that 100000 to 30000 or something like that. So it's it's just kind of a placeholder number. Worst case scenario is what I put in here. Mm -hmm. um, again, that'll have to be adjusted from year to year going, going forward. Uh, the septage aeration improvements is showing 750,000 in 2020. Uh, that's next year, but uh, we're looking at pushing that out a little further uh, as we've gone through the the model um, for the select board as far as the, the rate the rate study and everything. Mm -hmm. I think you're, we talked about that a couple of times. That that figure is probably drop. You're going to drop and, and get pushed out uh, for the simple fact that. A small plant like this, uh, you only want to take it so much septage before you actually start losing money on the septage. Mm -hmm. So, doing a seven hundred fifty thousand dollar upgrade on the on the plant, and, and I put this in here because it was part of Time Bonds two thousand and eight uh, capital upgrade. I, I might be missing that. I'm sorry. In my, yeah. Is that under sewer? I see yeah. that. Yeah. Like you know, because I have it on mine right here. Huh? When do you have that? <coughs> Not unless this is the one that I um, I did pull it out. I just thought I'd hit it. Okay. That might have been cut off from the what year is that gonna be in? But I well I got a two thousand twenty, but I, I think what we ought to do oh, is okay. we, we may as well just um, if we could I I don't think that's the number and I don't think that's there anymore. Because it, didn't, it for some reason it reprinted on the sheet, but this is the one I've been working on. So Anyways, that's the story. That's going to get pushed out. It'll be a lot less money um, okay. towards the capital. Sorry to confuse you. No, that's okay. Um, I thought I was missing something. And, and you can see the last thing under sewer. I got that 800000 pushed out to the year before the year of the expansion of Route 9. And like I said, that 800000 can drop to 300000 if that lining grant comes through or we'll get on a good lining program from year to year. Mm -hmm. And get out ahead of it. So, um, so there would be, you don't see with their current plan. I know their plan isn't completely solid yet. That we'd have to relocate any sewer lines or anything along those that aspect. No, I don't think we're going to have to relocate everything, but we're going to have to redesign the the, the E Street intersection. Yeah, that intersection. Um, yeah. And then, of course, we're going to have to design. We'll talk about water, but we're going to have to design the water from where we left off here. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, out front here. All the way to East Street, the new 12 inch we're putting in. Mm -hmm. Replace that 103 year old cast iron pipe that we got out there. Yeah. Um, and then the 350,000 should cover a couple of low areas that we inspected out there. There's a sagging line between two manholes, you can't line it. In other words, we're going to have backups eventually when the pipe sags. When was that? That uh, might be off of here too. Well, no, when we did the, the, when we did the, the previous. Oh, the other 300. Yeah, there's a, there's no there's a couple of sections out there when we just did the roof line inspection. Yeah, that we found in sags on the lines. An example is there's an area near the old stands. Okay. There's a section of pipe about 250 feet that's going to have to be replaced and not lined because there's a large sag in it. Okay. Between manholes. So my point is, if this drops off to 350 thousand, that would include that replacement. It's off road to the sidewalk area. So. Um, okay. I think that's about it. Unless we want to talk further on the sewer, um, pipe work is the is the main focus 
uh, for the next 10 years because it's been kind of a neglected part of the system in the last bunch of years. So. Um, water, are there any questions on sewer and we'll the water? Was that, just one more question on that. Yeah. Were those capital needs put into that model that you had when we were increasing sewer rates? Are these already factored into that model that tie and bond did? No. Because with this, this would come from those enterprise funds, theoretically, this capital. Or, or impact fees. Or impact fees, okay. Yeah. Impact you know, one fees. or the other. Yeah. Um, no, okay. but we also um, pushed out in that model, we, we did some changes to the, the big equipment, the factor. Mm -hmm. uh, which was a $600,000 piece of equipment, basically. We pushed it out and they're going to split it three ways further down the road. We did move some things down, but what was included in the model was that $800,000 four years from now. Okay. So the point is, is if, if you know, we decide to do it differently, doing it in increments out there, line it, and drop that to $350,000, there's your, your model will reflect it in, in the next few years to come. Okay. That model is, is a living. But tie and bond kind of controls that, so hopefully there's some continuity. It's our model now. It's, it's ours. It's ours to okay to present each year to the select board if, if you so okay so true. Yeah. Um, Sharon Gifford um, has got a really good handle on both water and sewer models. Oh, good. Her okay. and I worked. Okay. Her and I worked hand in hand on that project with tie and bond after hours when they when they came by and stuff like that. So okay, um, she's got a really good grasp on. That's one of her really strong points is those kinds of spreadsheets and models of okay. forecasting. So we do have somebody in-house that can run with that uh, going forward. Water? Yep. Um, Callahan well filter replacement, that's, <clears throat> that, that's an increase of 26,000 for the next 10 years. Um, I think in the, the first set of replacement filters was 150 something thousand. Mm -hmm. Um, but this is a, a basically a mandatory maintenance thing. This is what basically filters our drinking water and maintains our drinking water at the old ultra filtration plant. Um, this reflects the increase in cost from when the, when the uh, plant was put in 10 years ago to 10 years from now what it's going to cost to replace the filters. So uh, a vacuum truck again, we kicked it out five, six years and that'll be split three ways between general sewer and water because uh, it will be used by all three divisions, uh, dry excavation, uh, you know, cleaning the sewers, etc. cetera. Uh, Mount Warner, Mount Holyoke tank tree uh, clearing and access. Um, this is something that has not been done in many, many, many years and it's all grown in uh, to the point where if we have to get up there in an emergency, uh, it'll be pretty difficult with heavy equipment. A lot of that is just passable by, um, by regular pickup truck right now. Um, so again, and, and to get to these tanks, and not only that, to, to keep the, the large trees away from our actual water tanks, I'm requesting 25,000, I believe, out of our reserves, um, so that we can hire a company that can get in there with a, with a boom truck and, and properly clear that, uh, both tanks. Um, it's a maintenance item that, that really has been uh, neglected for many, many, many years. Um, to stay with this year, I'd like to go with the Callahan Well 1 and 2 recondition. Uh, so Callahan 1 Well would be this year for 25000 next year for $20,000. Uh, the reconditioning of the wells uh, serves a couple of purposes. Uh, down in the wells, there's these, these screens um, and, and other parts and pieces that, that wear out. It's recommended that they get a good inspection every five years. Um, we have recently, in re the recent year, year and a half, incurred some, some sand and whatnot coming through them screens. Um, so it's basically in line for an inspection and, and recondition. So, um, you know, it's not affecting our water or anything like that, but we got some sand coming through the system that, that kind of jams us up in the, in the actual plant, you know, additional maintenance, keeping, keeping things in there clean. So. Uh, we got to get in there and get an inspection and find out. We suspect there's a bad screen in one of the wells. Um, but Callahan, uh, th these can be done during uh, UMass break at Christmas time. So uh, if this goes through, passes through town meeting, we'll have to get right on the, um, the procurement for that. 
uh, in well one should be done this January and then well two can be done next January because we're suspecting the issue of well, well number one. Uh, it's kind of a high priority project uh, that we need to look into. What they discover and what it will, what it will cost, we, we may, will, may be able to handle it you know, in our capital outlay within our operating budget, depending on the expense, if they find anything wrong while they're in there doing the reconditioning, so. Uh, and that's more than just putting a camera down there? Yes, it's more it's like yeah. pumping. We, we have to actually tie into, in order to give Mike what he needs in fire in coverage of the town, we'll actually have to interconnect with uh, Amherst. Okay. Their water at the time. Mm -hmm. um, not saying we'd have to use much of their water, but you know, if, if Mike had something big he had to fight or whatever, we want the we want him to have what he needs for fire protection and uh, and whatnot. Um, in the winter time, it wouldn't be a matter of not having enough water to drink by any means. Mm -hmm. There's plenty, but in order to have proper fire coverage and, and cover everything else, we need uh, it's the best time to do it for Amherst also because they don't they they feed the mass. And uh, all the students will be gone for, for the month, so or most of the month. So it's the perfect time to do it for them and us. So. Um, replace water main. I'm, I'm backing up to the middle there for for uh, next year or two years. Yeah, next year, hundred thousand dollar water main replacement um, at Payroll Bridge. That's a project that that's expected that year or the next year. Um, there's an eight inch main hanging off the existing bridge, but <coughs> I'm not sure if everybody's aware, but they're coming in to replace that bridge, top to bottom. The, the, what they did recently was just a repair to that bridge. Um, and would behoove us to hang a 12 inch main from that new bridge when they put it in. So either side, we can upgrade our mains to 12 inch going forward. Um, that $100,000 will carry us up the street on both sides, so to speak, for a distance on 12 inch plus hang a new 12 inch from the bridge. Um, and that was an agreed on price with uh, DOT? Not as of yet. Not as of yet. Uh, now, so far they're telling me that they'll only replace in kind. They're only gonna pay for whatever's existing. So in other words, we'll have to pay the difference between the eight and the 12 inch. Mm -hmm. But I put a little extra funding in here to run that 12 inch further away from the bridge both ways. Okay. Because one, if we head up towards, um, um, to the, to the south, up the hill will actually tie into the 12 inch already. So the money's, were, I figured the money's in here to just do that job while the contractor's in there. Rather than uh, re-procure it out, make it part of that project. And so one side we're already connected to the 12 inch. We wouldn't have to go in and spend our funds later on to replace 300 feet of pipe mm -hmm. to, to upgrade to 12 inch. So um, good time to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, Looking a little further out, water main re uh, replacement uh, with construction. I have a $1 million figure there four years out for for the new 12 inch main out here and whatever water works we need to adjust out by the mall. Um, that Route 9 project includes part of South Maple. Mass DOT is gonna take responsibility uh, from Route 9 to the, the bike path um, on South Maple. We have an older main, we have a newer main there and the thought process is let's get off the old main and move the services over to the newer main while that project happens, so there'll be a cost there. And then we can uh, eliminate the old cast iron pipe that's there that's 100 plus years old, so we're approaching that. Um, I can stop there or, or, or go out further if you have any other questions on the other projects further out. It's probably good for now, I think, just to give us a synopsis. Mm -hmm. Um, David, you had a question? Yeah, so the, we got a number of Route 9 projects, some of them not even in Hadley, and I'm just, the, the rotary is supposed to be at the end of the Coolidge Bridge in 2019. Uh, I don't see that project moving. Um, do you have a sense of when all of this is likely to happen? The way we've been hearing, you know, I got these lined up for the years they're supposed to happen. Um, I haven't received any official word, but what I'm hearing is basically everything's been bumped a year right now, minimum. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've been trying to, to get communication on the Route 9 uh, reconstruction out here so that we can get our, our books in order with their consultant for to get our stuff designed that we need to do out there. Sounds like uh, potentially Route 9's been bumped out to 22 or 23 now, I think. 
Uh, Bay Road Bridge seems like it's going to land in 2021. I haven't heard anything different. They're going out to 75%. We met with them in May mm -hmm. to make some changes in the water and a few changes they want to make on the bridge area, but that sounds on target. I believe the, the rotary was forecasted, or the, or the down here was forecasted for this year or next year, but I, I just don't see it happening right now. I uh, see no surveyor no, marks of no. um, I would venture to say that all these projects may pump out a year on the capital, but until we receive official word, I'm kind of keeping them where they're forecasted right now. Mm -hmm. So I, we should be hearing any day on the Bay Road Bridge 75%. Oh, yeah. um, or within the next month or two. And typically that's like means it's about two years away. Typ typically, yeah, generally because they gotta go through the public hearing uh, hearing yeah. and, and you know, cross the T's and dot the I's, but yeah. generally it's about a two year one to two years. Yeah, so there's gonna be public hearings, there's gonna be environmental permitting, there's gonna be yeah. uh, construction bidding. Mm -hmm. You know, so all of that takes time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's good unless we want to get into funding source talking or anything like that, but we can always do that. You want to do that separately? Let's do uh, that separately. Yes. Yeah. and I are yeah. trying to work on okay. finding the, the cash to make all of this happen. Okay, that sounds good. That, yeah. will, that will be a challenge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so Marlo, you could stay until the end if you want or go, either whatever you want to do. <laughs> Leave that up to I wasn't stay to support you, but okay. I see now that you're leaving. All this stuff is like, oh man, I got to keep an eye on this, <laughs> or like try to really remember yeah, this because we have me, like somebody else coming up, you know. Well, there's the to, well, there's to go through there. all this as opposed well, to being like it's in good hands. It's there's you know, a there's a worksheet. You're gonna see me in my bathrobe and a cup of coffee walking down the street. <laughs> so there's a worksheet on his door. Yeah. There's a worksheet. And David, you got these too yeah. that I filled out for each project that you can go to his. Uh, I want to say piggy bank. That's the wrong word. <laughs> uh, but he can go to these if there's any need of explanation on the projects going forward because mm -hmm. I've done these and, and I've given the notes down the bottom when they're expected to start on uh, approximate cost and all that. If they're replacements or or new or whatever. So mm -hmm. uh, he he also has these, so it may be helpful going forward. Um, to bridge that gap in the next year anyways until the my successor gets on his feet and gets a handle on yeah. this. So. Yeah. Well, thank you for putting all this together. Yeah. We'll miss you, as we've already said. So <laughs> thank you thank for you. coming back and presenting it again. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, don't be afraid to reach out after either. OK. That, that's out there with the select board and whatnot, if I can help in any way or answer We'll any send questions. David over in his bathrobe to ask you a <laughs> list of questions. <laughs> <laughs> you asking me why his street is the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> David keeps being late to work. We need you to self the road. <laughs> uh, no, he, I'm not going to give up where he lives, but he's real close to the DPW. Yeah. 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 I can see it from my house. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, it's just around the corner. Well, I'm in the book, and it's not really <laughs> We know where you live. Yeah, you know where I live. Your you know, front yard is kitty corner to the DPW yard. It's not around the corner. Yeah. <laughs> not to give give it up. Give I was going to say around the corner from Foster's. Yeah. Mm. All right. Well, Chief, want you take it away here. Thank you. I'm sorry I uh, missed the last one. Oh. <clears throat> it was school inspection time, and we we're rushing to get reports out. Um, so I drove by to see if you guys were leaving. Sorry about that. Um, so the biggest things for us, and uh, I, I did notice that the Municipal Building Committee um, kind of doubled up on one of our items, so the Public Safety uh, Center, the emergency generator. Yep. Um, I actually met with FM Generator, that's our service provider, and they gave me um, the estimate and also the, the guidance on when we should be looking for truly replacing that. So. Again, I don't want to. I don't want to be in conflict with the building committee, but I'm confident that the 2020 date, based upon the guidance from FM Generator, who services our generator annually, mm -hmm. and uh, I know that the public, uh, the municipal building committee had added some additional funding for what ifs, um, 
So I had done the same thing. So we're we're twenty five thousand dollars off. I think we can probably um, we can probably pare that down, or you know maybe go in the middle of the road there if needed. But basically, I factored in there the cost of the generator that I did get a quote from the company. But we also have to make sure that we have the ability to have power there while all this is happening. So there's going to be the need for temporary generated power, and there's a lot of stuff that goes with it, potential upgrades to wiring going into the building. But we're pretty much at the end of the life expectancy, and they really don't have replacement parts. Or if they do, it takes quite a while for them to get them. So um, I think 2020 should be the drop dead time frame when we should be really looking looking at replacing that unit. Uh, that's probably the biggest priority you that we have. feel done. confident you can make it through <clears throat> the winter this year? Yes, yep. Uh, I mean, again, we have a uh, redundant plan for, uh, you know, the upcoming North Station with the ability to actually move folks into that, not with a dispatch console, but place to work at this point. Uh, we also have the mobile command trailer that is set up to be able to dispatch with radios, uh, heated, air conditioned. So if we have a true emergency where our system's going down, we do have that ability. <clears throat> and we can, you know, if for example, we did have that when we put this in here, we did that at one point where we the, the motherboard and the generator went down, but we had also lost street power at the same time. It was like they both kind of caused the same thing. Uh, street power did come back on, but we were about five minutes away from losing our entire dispatch console for backup power just from the battery backups we have. So I did receive grant funding to boost those those battery packs up. So we have half an hour of backup battery just at the console. So if we had to hook up a generator or something, uh, if that emergency generation would go down, it, it does give us a bit of time to actually potentially make that happen. 911, if the power goes down and we don't have the ability to reconnect, those, those calls would get bumped to our backup, which is East Hampton State Police. Um, obviously, we don't want to do that to them, but uh, if we truly can't get back online, that's that's what would happen. Uh, so I, I think that's a pretty fair estimate for that. Um, so the other one is uh, the 1994 utility truck. Are, uh, basically, we took all of our equipment off of our old brush truck that we took out of service, our 1951, that ended up selling quite well at the, at the auction a couple weeks ago. Um, so that unit we replaced with our 1994 utility truck that's been in service with us, also a free piece of surplus equipment. Uh, again, un, you know, unforeseen, it's, it's a 1994, uh, so the transmission uh, actually went on it. Unfortunately, we just finally got everything into it and the cost for that and also the fuel pump that needs to be replaced is exceeding what we should be expending on this. Um, so our fire association did purchase, you've probably driven by and seen the Conquer truck that we have out back that has a pump on it. Our fire association found that online uh, and we filled the need by expending our funds on that. It was 26,000. The town put about $1,400 into it out of my regular budget. Um, but that truck, unfortunately, it's not spec'd out as a brush truck, but we can use it short term right now uh, to fill that once it's put into service. However, we just we don't have a brush unit now. We don't have a pickup truck that we can actually drive up and into the woods. So uh, our original estimate for if we were to buy brand new, uh, you're looking at probably about $185,000 for a fully built out brush truck. We're not looking for that. We're looking for a chassis with a flatbed on it that we can purchase a skid unit and get on it and, and get going. So we're looking for a used piece of equipment. And with our research, our estimations, we're, we're thinking that that $31,000 is the basically the bottom line. Unfortunately, the federal surplus, we're not seeing any of the pickups coming out. Uh, we're not seeing any of the, the cars that we used to get. So the Durango I used to drive in, they're, they're just not, they're not there or they're not even worth attempting to pick up anymore, unfortunately. Um, so so what this is, is basically a used truck, and then you want to put it 
new equipment on it or stuff you already have? Whatever we have that we can reuse. So, yeah. for example, we took our pump off of our old brush truck. Yeah. We're going to attempt to reuse that on the skid unit that we put in. So basically the back of this pickup will just be a flatbed, <clears throat> and then it's purchasing a poly tank for water, another poly tank for foam, or balancing that out with skid units that they actually pre, they pre create, pre make like our- And skid team. unit basically just means it's like this skid it's all you put on the back yep. of a truck and bolt Correct. it into it's place. All yeah, 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 okay. So again, that's what we estimated for that. Mm -hmm. um, so that would fill that need for, uh, I mean, that brush truck goes out quite often. Our concern right now is if we need to get a truck up Skinner Mountain, which we've done in the past, which was brush one, uh, we just, we don't really have that, that piece of equipment now that we lost that, that utility truck, unfortunately. Uh, we were hoping that we could fill the gap with uh, Brian's old me mechanics truck, uh, another piece of free surplus that we had gotten. Uh, unfortunately, the all the gas lines have brought it out on that, and again, we're looking at a 1986 um, piece of equipment that we, you know, we're, we try and run these as long as we possibly can, but we just, it, it's not worth the money that we're we're dumping into it at this point. So that's why uh, I think that would that would fill that that shortfall. And I'm thinking the DPW, all those trucks you had going out for auction were not in that great of shape. No, right? no. As a matter of fact, some of the stuff that we've just replaced is actually going back to my. The EDI we actually trucks. that all went up for auction. So Gary, yeah. Gary's old maintenance truck that was free surplus that was sold. Yeah, yeah. And okay. So yeah. that's what I figured. Uh, let's see. The, the basic ambulance, um, that's something that we've had in place for, uh, David and I worked on that when this whole process started back in 2005, I think. David and I sat down and put together our initial budget to start that up. Um, so that's kind of like the boilerplate that we're looking at for phase in. I think uh, that number can be adjusted. We are talking with Northampton, um, and I think we would go down the used ro road to start out with, seeing how we're now contracted with a private ambulance service. So if we were going to put a backup ambulance to get our, to start our phase in on this, uh, there's a lot of departments that actually have really nice ambulances that I, could, I think we could pick up for like minimal costs. Is there willing, instead of just turning it back into the dealership, they'd be willing for us to give them what the dealership would be giving them. So, um, I think we're, we're going to be looking at that direction, but there are some initial costs. I don't foresee it being the, the 273, that's for a brand new type one or type three ambulance. So that, that might be amended, but we wanted to keep it in there just as a, um, a reference point of what, you know, the worst case scenario, if there's, there's nothing out there. Um, our administrative response vehicle. So again, our Ford Expedition, that was free surplus that started on fire and had to be taken out of service. That was for uh, fire prevention at the time. It was supposed to go to uh, the deputy chief. We ended up uh, filling in. Uh, we had a great deal come across our plate. Uh, UMass had a Ford F500 car uh, that they were taken offline. It was actually the police chief's car when she was, uh, Barbara Connor when she was at UMass in great shape. I mean, it has it has some miles on it, but it's filling that plate, and we got it for you know twenty five hundred dollars. So that's filling that uh, that void until uh, we're going to be due for that two thousand and twenty one to get that um, that back up. So my car would be replaced. My car would go to the deputy, and then our our uh, fire prevention folks would actually have that that car to use. So that's that's the plan. So right now uh, with the new new utility truck that we got they're you know they're utilizing that around town that's going out for medical calls that's going out for uh false alarms that we don't have to respond into an e in an engine uh so that that truck has been, been very helpful and uh the ladder truck platform uh, that is spec'd out for 2026 so we have a you know a 2000 quint right now so i've had this in capital for a number of years just to keep you up to date on what that that cost is looking at you know a 20, 20 plus year uh, turnover. Uh, obviously, we inspect this truck annually. The cost right now average between fourteen to nineteen thousand dollars a year for repairs and maintenance. 
So that includes all of its federal DOT inspections, the ladder inspection, pump testing, and then anything that's required that, you know, if we have lights that, that break down, um, that's about the average 14 to 19,000 we're looking at a year. 19,000 was the worst year because we had to replace all the LED lighting on it because our lighting was just, it was falling apart. I mean, the truck is, you know, it goes out a lot and it's when it's exposed to fire and all this other stuff, things tend to break. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have, uh, we've been su successful on the, uh, the pump tests and, and the ladder tests and then I think it's because we've been so religious about getting the truck out every year. So that's been good. Um, and you guys just got a new truck, right? The one that that's our rescue pumper. Pumper, pumper yeah. yes. Yeah. So this is actually a, the ladder platform. Uh, we're looking into both. I mean, you can see what we're protecting now for, we have a 75 foot quint right now. Uh, my opinion is that truck should have been a minimum of 100 foot uh, ladder because we, you know, we're, we're maxing out all the time. We're planning for backing apparatus in in order to get every foot we can get. So the next truck would be spec'd out for, you know, 100 or 107 foot. Mm -hmm. We have, you know, a brand new hotel going in that has limited access on the back of the building. You know, we're accessing in the front from a distance because we can't, you know, there's still driveways, there's still uh, areas that we have. We have to really be cautious of how we get in there and half the time it's us pulling in and backing in to get every inch that we can get. So that's why down the road we would probably be looking at the next size up. Mm -hmm. Um, the uh, OSHA capital upgrades, and I know you have um, you have all of these forms, I think, up there. Um, but I did, we did receive some good news, and I haven't even had a chance to talk to David about it. We're you know, hopefully be meeting next week. But the Department of Labor and Standards did come out with a frequently asked questions for fire service on OSHA. Um, it is good news in my opinion. It's not anywhere near as crazy as all the chiefs were originally thinking. So I think the $25,000 that we're looking at should decrease. Uh, we had put in a $25,000 placeholder for the next two years just to cover a lot of those. Um, and I think we're probably gonna be able to cover the majorities of these out of our regular operating budget. I don't foresee anything too crazy. We already have, uh, um, systems in place for fit testing. You know, we have equipment at the Hampshire County level where we do our own fit, fit testing. We fit test all of our firefighters annually. Uh, you guys were great about, you know, providing us with new air packs, new masks, and we have actually a replacement program in place now so that we're not going out as far and having to come to you for another $90,000 appropriation for air packs. So we have that plan in place. Um, as far as annual uh, physicals, that was the other concern is that we were going to have to have all of our firefighters go through an annual DOT physical, and that's only related to folks that are actually on a hazmat team. So we, at this time, don't have anybody that's dedicated to the state hazmat team. So that that was another another big one that we were concerned about. The only ones that we may have, um, I think it's mostly going to be just a standard operating procedure but folks climbing up on top of the truck to reload three-pack hose. Uh, there are some safety requirements on that that I think we can, we can handle in-house with some simple modifications and standard operating procedures. Uh, and then the other one is the, um, the plimo vent, so exhaust handling. Uh, our station is set up with, you know, at the time we have in there what was designed, so we have a switch we flip on and there's, there is evacuation of air in there. Uh, it's not a plimo vent where it's hooked to the truck and capturing all the exhaust, but the station, the way it's designed right now, we wouldn't have enough room to even be able to install those. Um, so that's something we would be looking at if there was the redesign or, you know, if there was the build out of the station down the road. Um, so I think, I think we're going to be good on, on that. The fire department uh, roof and bay expansion, again, that's been been in capital. That's right out of the DRA report, uh, and that's with a um, with a cost escalation on it. So that that was done in the DRA report, so you can reference that as to what we were looking at. It was to uh, add on that uh, fourth bay and then uh, put in some sleeping quarters, bathrooms, and, and other stuff like that. So that, that hasn't changed. That's been in this capital plan for, for a while now. 
So Mike, what's the breakdown? It says roof and bay. What's the breakdown for the roof and how much for the bay? Uh, this is all bay. I'm not sure why it says the roof part. Um, I think you're going to put a roof on top of the bay leg. Like you're going to. Well, yeah. I oh, mean, yeah. 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 <laughs> roof and bay. We assume that. <laughs> Sorry. I was just thinking bay expansion. <coughs> but yeah, there's nothing in there specifically. Just bless you. Yeah, if we replace the roof on the entire year, yeah, Was it last year? Yep. Yeah. 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 Year before. Oh, it was last yeah. year. It all blends together. Yeah, I got yeah. finished last year. Yeah. And then the, the last one is actually under the municipal building. We we had actually met so under municipal building committee. It was the excuse me uh, expand and repave the parking lot. They have that down for 2019. Marvel and I had actually met last year when it was put in to, to go through that. Uh, that um, <coughs> Mar Marlo feels that that driveway is tired, obviously, but um, we're also looking for some additional parking to get the police cruisers off of the back, um, you know, the green space. And so that's, that's under the municipal building committee. I did not put one in for that, even though we did work together on coming up with that, that number. So that's adding some additional parking to the south of the police uh, parking lot and then repaving around. Uh, we're seeing usually at least once a year we're requesting the DPW to come out and repair the uh, um, the drains. They're, they're starting to collapse, the cash basins, they're collapsing a little bit. And it is definitely, the driveway is definitely coming up. So I think it's, it's getting pretty close to the end of its life. That may be, yeah, that, that number by the time you get to it probably is going to be increased. This is actually, um, they actually did increase it, so the municipal building did add to ours yeah. for escalation. Right. Yeah, you're not going to be able to overlay that lot. It's gotten beyond that. Or if you just you know, put a code over it, it's just the, the, the uh, unstable material underneath is just going to reflect back through within a few years. It's going to look horrible again. So. Wouldn't you want to do your building expansion, though, before you did the parking lot? Uh, the building expansion wouldn't uh, actually impact. It's actually in that green space. Um, I mean, potentially, yeah, but I'm not sure. I mean, we can't. I don't know when this building expansion is actually going to happen. Um, but yeah, I think I think it would be minimal impact on that for the expansion. Yeah, I was just going to ask kind of a question along those lines: Is is there kind of an expansion plan for the site? Because I know that. Police department wanted to put cruiser housing in, maybe a bay expansion. Is there kind of like a broader vision? So when we do pave, mm -hmm. you know, if we need an extra 10 feet of pavement to plan for the future, maybe that's good to do now as opposed to later. I don't know. I don't know if there is anything like that, or it sounds like there's <laughs> money already spent on a plan for the the bay expansion. So the actually that that DRA report actually included police and fire. So they walked through all the buildings, actually all the municipal buildings, mm -hmm. and asked for what your space needs were going to be. At the time, it was Chief Huckowitz, so I'm sure Mike would probably add to that. Yeah. Um, but there was, uh, you know, there was adding storage space on the second floor on the police side, and then there was attempting to try and free up. So taking some of the fire department offices, putting it into the expansion. Mm -hmm. and allowing that space to go to the police. Um, there's even There was even uh, a plan to relocate the dispatch center into the center of the building between the police and fire so that we could then free up you know, additional, additional space for uh, the police. So you know, all that was presented in that DRA mostly. Um, yeah. So that's, that's what we had come up with that initial number. But certainly mm -hmm. it would okay. probably be good to look at again. Yeah, yeah, or come up with a strategy for implementing it. Maybe you spread it out a little bit. I don't know. You know, that's always would be good, but <laughs> I don't know. The DRA awesome. report is on the select board website. So okay. You can reference it there. Mm -hmm. Some of the interior design for the public safety complex is not there because of security issues, mm -hmm. uh, but it's a easily available. Uh, for the parking lot, is there a season that this should occur in or not occur in? What, replacement of the park lot? Yeah. Um, not Any time during the construction yeah. season. Yeah, no, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, not winter. Unless we get a Bermuda winter. But. 
<laughs> like asphalt. Like it's it's Bermuda. Bermuda. Yeah. yeah, the way things are going, who knows? <laughs> May, May through October. Okay. My last thing is there's one item on here that didn't make it to this capital. It'll be going in for next year, but just to get give you kind of a heads up is our radio communications have been miserable. And we've been working with our, uh, it's called Goose Town Communications. They just completed uh, a review of our service coverage. So with the mapping of what we're actually getting for for coverage, and it's it's not good. So we are, we're working with them. Hopefully we'll have cost estimates and some plans for Im implementation for that. It may not be a capital, maybe something that might have to go to the town meeting. Um, but we've been having a lot of issues with radio coverage and I we've we've had service consistently you know it's when we added uh, you know the Verizon Tower at the center station and we have the new tower up at the um, up north and north uh, that's all good and fine but we're, we're having line of sight issues we're having uh, strength of uh, frequency issues so that we're having a hard time just communicating in certain spaces if they're putting together a good plan for us, but it's 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 not cheap. We're looking at trying to work some uh, space out with uh, DCR up on Skinner Mountain to try and maybe pare this down to one site replacement that might really beef up the area that we're concerned about right now that would give us some line of sight. Uh, Mount Warner has consistently been a problem for us where it's located. It really um, screws up the triangle um, so anyways so that's that's another thing I just want to let you know we're looking at pretty substantial potential costs and that's um, putting it on like a repeater station or something like that as opposed to just a new radio actually we're, we would be looking at a microwave system mm -hmm. so it would allow us to simulcast but also it really it's based upon line of sight so if we have that ability to put something on Skinner Mountain it would really clean up so that frequency is just it's not trying to grab you know the the frequency we have right now is really broad and wide so trying to to grab those it's sometimes it, it, it gets messed up but this is really um, this is the way they're they're recommending that we we go and that's for 2020 um i'll have it in for next year but we're like i said we're working with them on a phase in plan so they're hopefully it won't be all at once it'll be so doing one phase in and see what that does for us and then maybe move there they would build it out so that it would wouldn't be we wouldn't have to redo it so basically we would just expand upon it so i'll have more information hopefully by the next time we meet mm -hmm. Any questions um, you said you've gone to auction with a couple of these vehicles where does the money go that you get for the vehicle uh, we're waiting for the check, but um, that was a discussion that we were going to have. It goes to free cash normally, so uh, for these vehicles, if it's if it's federal surplus um, under there's two different programs. There's the Department of Defense program, and then there's the excess surplus property, and that's through uh, the Forest Fire Service. Under that program, they don't they don't they take those vehicles back. So there's no money involved with it, but they're also some of the DOD equipment there. It was designed to support the fire service. So if the town, you know, I guess there's been some issues with the town making some money off of equipment, like they were selling it before they were supposed to or, or whatever. But um, we were hoping that maybe some of that could come back towards, you know, fixing up the car that the, or the truck, that the fire association purchased or um, I don't know if potentially that funding could be used for the $30,000 brush truck that we're looking for. So kind of repurposing that money back into the department. But that's a discussion we'd have to have with select board and, and finance committee. What did the brush truck go for? $6,600. Oh. And the parts truck that's been sitting in the grass went for 1100 so. And I'm happy to say that we did make the money back on the engine that we had to replace on the rescue truck we ended up getting I think fifty five hundred dollars for that. I got a bunch of stuff going out uh, Wednesday night to the board for a surplus too that also goes back in the general fund. general fund when we turn over equipment. Like I said, the more we can get for these as we turn them over, it goes mm -hmm. back general fund anyway. So. Okay. 
Sounds good. Unless anybody has anything else. That's good for that. And now we can move on to uh, talking about how to afford You have one more meeting coming up on the 24th. Uh, is there any department that you want to see that you have done? I mean, to me, the only department we haven't seen is the school department. We did not get a chance to call them today, so um, you know that would be the only one that we haven't okay. talked to yet. Should I invite them for the point board? Yeah, we could we could do that. Okay. And then we'll have to vote on a recommendation to send to the town meeting warrant mm -hmm. for the capital plan, but. I know we were waiting on the free cash and that kind of thing to kind of determine what we could afford, where we could draw funds from, and then prioritize what we can get. Right. So. so we have a preliminary free cash number, about four hundred thousand dollars, from yes. the uh, from the email that we got from Justin. It sounded like there was additional money that could be pushed into that. Um, I didn't understand it that way. I thought he says that when, once he gets that figured in, that, that this is the amount that he's going to okay, request. Well, or part of it was for his submission. So we're just under 400000 I yeah. think it's going to stick there. Which, Which is, is a little... Four, yeah, 398 or something. 397 or something like that, yeah. So we're just shy of 400000 Uh That's a little less than we had expected. Yeah. Uh, we know that we had some big deductions to uh, free cash. Um, we also know that we received revenue in at the last moment that did not get uh, posted until after the, the 1st of July. So there was a, uh, you, you walked me through all the, uh, the, right. the ins and outs. Uh, we got a late payment for the local aid from the state. Right, we, we did. Um, and then and we then got a, uh, there was something that, uh, what was the one on? Taxes $90,000 of rollback taxes. Rollback taxes came in in July. Which we didn't get in 2018. Okay. Uh, but we did in 19. Uh, there was an additional $90,000 that came in from taxation uh, after July 1st. So right. it was a substantial and amount of money. It just didn't get the uh, books right. by the. We had 120000 in tax title yeah. come in in July and August yeah. between the two. So, and we are, since they're, they're not there by June 30th, we're not going to get it. But it's it's nice knowing as you're spending your money down that we've got something coming in, too. Mm -hmm. So, it's, it's there for the next yeah. round. Um, we do have, I know in the past, there is that option of sort of buying the free cash some point mid-year, but I think we wouldn't do it before a special time of year. Yeah, okay. so, so that's something that we can look at is whether we want to do a uh, February certification, which we used to do, and then to have that free cash available for the annual time meeting for capital. Uh, that, of course, just takes money away from free pulls cash. It, and pulls it forward. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're going to take a look at that. Um, you have about $29,000 in capital stabilization. So. That's based upon the existing balance and then the cleanup articles. Uh, did he give us a number for sewer and water reserves? No. No, he didn't, so we need that information. So is this sheet here, the fiscal 19 funding source sheet, mm -hmm. is that still pretty much uh, on target for the most part? Mm, I would say that uh, the capital stabilization is going to be a lot less. I've got a bunch of marks and stuff on my sheet here, just trying to clean, clean it up a little bit. Yeah. And the um, van and the Sally for crossed off. That's it, uh, the sheet I have. Yeah, that's all good. What do you have crossed off? Van and Sally Port. Oh, for capital stabilization. It looks like um, Council on Aging Computers. Computers. Yeah, Council on Aging oh, Computers. Yeah. Computers. Sorry. The Sally Port, yep. Sally Port, we already have the money for, so. Mm -hmm. it was yeah, we've got, so we crossed that off. Yeah. We have the gable end repair in two spots. 
in DPW and municipal building and coming from two different funding sources. One from the Gable End Repair of Highway is Capital Stabilization and Gable End Repair for Municipal Building is from Chapter 90. I don't know if we can... That was not talked about or agreed upon taking it on Chapter 90. That's the first I've heard of it. Okay, so we should take it off of Chapter 90 maybe? Yeah. That, okay. That's for roads in my opinion. But okay. We're going to need that going forward on some future road projects at some point. Chapter 90 plan for that for the board. David? We have about twenty-five thousand left um, in, in an article uh, since that we were uh, for municipal buildings, There's an OPM or a building. Yeah. For Is the, that uh, something that we could use on the we, we can on repurpose, highway? We can repurpose some of that money. Yes. And we're gonna have. Get you started. What's that? The you know, twenty-five thousand dollar balance uh, in it. Um, municipal planning. Municipal building planning article. It was 50000 originally. Um, it was to cover the senior center, fire station. Um, yeah, it was OPM center. money that we were going to be using on the buildings other library. than the library, senior center. But then they moved on to their own. Then they moved on to their own. We don't have, we have this money stranded, so that's a possibility we can use that money. Redirect yeah. it. Could that be for the garage design? That's what I'm wondering. Yeah, yeah. And then it's about twenty five, fifty thousand dollars left in that account. Um, it was 50 and we I, I borrowed half of it, but we didn't even spend that. We didn't even spend the full time. Yeah, there are two articles. There's one for the architect and then the other one for the OPM. We certainly don't need the OPM right now. Right. Well, we'll, we'll check on that. Then. Okay. Because especially since it, if it's something that's coming up for 19. And right now, that's right. we have that in Chapter 90 column, let's say, uh, instead of in capital stabilization, the highway garage design. I'm right. Just talking about so that. we'll find it that so we'll find, see if we can find yeah. something yeah. to repurpose. How about the water and sewer enterprise free cash would that be available to, by the time we meet? That should be somewhere around the neighborhood of five hundred thousand dollars each. Maybe the sewer would be less than that. But we should we should talk to Justin and get that number. So it looks like those would have enough money for for what's what we're at least laid out this year. Yeah, some case. of that's built into the operating budget for water in particular. Okay. Yeah, that well filter replacement was that an operating budget at all? The the filter replacement was raised at the annual town meeting. Each year, each okay. Year in. Each so year, it'll be two hundred sixty thousand at the end of this cycle. Okay, it comes out of reserves mm -hmm. from year to year. Yeah. Okay. And we're in year three of that replacement cycle. It's going into the third, I believe. Yes. Yeah. And how about for those sewer impact fees for that line, those lining and repairs, or is that kind of? That's a fluctuating number. Um, but we'd have to certify that as well. No, that so number that. that number is available, and we're spending eighty thousand for backfilling the reserves to the repair for the emergency yeah. repairs. Okay, that's so that it doesn't affect our rates study model in that regard for the ninety. Or is it ninety thousand or eighty? I can't remember. Eighty thousand. Yeah. Yeah. That we're going to transfer for impact back to reserves because I took that out of the operating. Okay. In reserves mm -hmm. to do that project in an emergency. Mm -hmm. So in order to stick to our model and to keep our financial where we need to be in sewer, that has to be taken out of impact because impacts for capital projects. Okay, and so put back I'm reserves. just thinking about this next lining project. How do we, do we do the same thing next year? Is that how we operate that fund so it's revolving? Well, I, I think that you can't judge impact fees from here to here. It depends what's being built and what's paid for impact fees. Yeah. So that's kind of a moving target. I mean. My guess is that you, you get you, you choose from year to year whether reserves or impact fees or whatever, depending on what the the, the uh, status of the account is for impact fees. Yeah. The online budget. That could be deferred. Could defer it for another year. 
So, first, I know you mentioned the, the Chapter 90 funds. Uh, I just wanted to, for the record, so say that nobody has said anything to me about using Chapter 90 funds on any of those projects. So it would be a, okay. Uh, that chapter, I mean, the reason I say that is Chapter 90 is kind of earmarked for uh, so much bigger projects right now. The money's already going to be committed, so yeah. um, the funding isn't going to be there for that. Yeah, so let's move, so we probably have to move this 8000 for Pole Barn into capital stabilization, right? Oh, those are down there too. Yeah, because that's in yeah, chapter that's 90. 96. I don't know if you guys have a copy of the spreadsheet. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know where Here. chapter 9 is. Here. Or is this yours? Or no, no, that's not true. Here, if you guys want to see that. There. That's, that's what I'm going off of right now, trying to identify the funding sources. Sure. Um, <coughs> yeah, I, I don't know how they landed there. I'm guessing uh, there's a DPW worker that's on the committee, but nothing's been said to me. About I don't know, David, did you just assign us? I don't know where it came from. Chapter 90? Yeah. yeah. Uh, some I did, but not all of them. Okay. So is Chapter 90 usually just used for? The street it's just for roads. It's road. supposed just to be road. for roads and bridges, but you can use it on related uh, infrastructure such as buildings. Uh, you can even use it on equipment. We tend not to. Yeah, chapter chapter ninety. They're they're not covering what it costs to keep up with the roads. They're they're cutting it every year, and our costs are going up. Mm -hmm. So you, you kind of want to stay away from funding other projects with it. I mean, you can. But where you're going to feel it in your roads is eight, ten years from now when you start uh, tapping into that chapter ninety money for other yeah, things. Yeah, that's that's for Moody Bridge Road. Is that mainly that project? Yeah, there's yeah. some some coming out of there. Um, we have a balance of one hundred eighty nine thousand right now. Mm -hmm. I don't know about a hundred thousand of that's going to be committed before next year's allotment. Leaves us eighty nine. But again, we're already working on next year's road projects and prioritizing the roads. Mm -hmm. I've been here three years and it's gone down $8,000 a year, but our costs have gone up mm -hmm. as far as road work. So $8,000 is, is one of your roads being refinished or, or some sort of maintenance done. With it. So we're losing a road every two or three years. Mm -hmm. We've uh, not enough fun. And every any day now we're going to hear from the pavement management program that, that we're we put together too, being done by a consultant firm to analyze our roads and what we get for revenue for roads and, and where we need to go and where we're at from a capital standpoint. I'm expecting that um, report any day. Yeah, I mean we put down that chip seal on West Street. Is that temporary or is that permanent there? That's 20 percent. That's permanent. That's permanent. Yeah, there's okay. different road treatments you can use today. Yeah. You can go over that with a microsurface next mm -hmm. year. It, it'll look like blacktop. They call it a cape seal. Yeah. Um, there's different treatments. You should get 8 to 10 years out of the 20% rubber chip seal. That's the, the better of the three products you can put down for chip seal. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been but trying to. Is that to something we are kind of is in the plan to move forward with a lot of the roads? Is that type of material? Um, I had to do a large stretch of 47 because. I mean, that would be a million dollars to, to actually mill that and mm -hmm. refill it with an inch and a half of block top. So I've been taking the, the tack towards the roads the last three years as the funding goes down and the, and the costs go up to getting into some of these other uh, routine maintenance or preventative maintenance surface treatments mm -hmm. so that we can extend some of our mileage out further out, eight to 10 years, rather than let them, let them sit in two years from now, we have to mill in re blacktop, which is three times the cost of putting down a rubber chip seal, we get eight years out of it rather than spend that kind of money up front two years from now. Okay. It's a it's a whole system and a you know, um, like I said, that pavement management program is due any time and it'll give us a good idea of where we're at um, cost wise with our roads and where we need to go. So. Okay. 
of chapter 90 and this what we have allocated right now we're kind of good there it seems we don't have to go too far you got this at the 350 number? The 350 number, yeah. Yeah, we're bringing in around 363 or something like 360 that. 360.5 and it was 368.5. Yeah, so that's okay. conservative yeah. number. So we're just kind of keeping that alone right now. Yeah. And not going to that. Okay. Yeah. One thing you don't want is to have people let your rogues go. Oh, yeah. You'll receive more complaints. Well, you know, I mean, and, and that's the trap that. The, to be honest with you, that a lot of communities can fall into. Well, we'll, we'll take out a chapter 90 for this this year or next year. We'll catch up with the roads, but you don't feel that punch that you've taken out of that, mm -hmm. that chapter 90 until you hit the seven, eight year. Because now you're falling further and further behind from roads that are eight to 10 years out. Now now your roads have doubled seven, eight years from now. You need to do something about well mm -hmm. before it gets to the, you know, the very costly treatments like full debt reclamation or something. So you don't feel it now. You feel it eight to 10 years out when you start if you get off your program. Mm -hmm. In other words, uh, I will put them three or four roads off and then it snowballs in a, in a quick way and then it all shows up at once. Yeah. Uh, when you get a bad winter. And they read the editorials about Northampton or New York. Complain them about their roads. Yeah. Never saw one about it. Just remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we actually get thank you notes. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. We, well, we actually respond to more just over the lines of complaints than people are thinking it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we get those lines mm -hmm. saying, not ours. <laughs> Thank you, what's up? Uh, so it looks like the one area is borrowing we have quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And how, I mean, that's, how do we want to factor that into the calculation of capital stabilization. Are we saying we already gonna have approximately four hundred thousand in free cash after we've paid for the borrowing we've done in years past? Or is that borrowing already incorporated into our current budget? Well you're gonna have four hundred thousand dollars that you're gonna be using for operations and mm -hmm. if there's anything left over then that would go into your capital stabilization. Uh, as, as as I said, we got less coming in that we had expected so yeah well that's why I'm just concerned about the borrowing aspect where that fits into that total we need mm -hmm. so would we be looking at cutting some of those items that are under capital or shifting them over to borrowing I would shift them over to borrowing we can cut the 125,000 for the emergency generator and FY19 so long as we fund it in 2020. Mm -hmm. Also the 25,000 you have for OSHA, I think we could be comfortable with taking that out. You have for, yeah, 25,000 okay. for FY19. Okay. Do you push it off a year, yeah. Mike? I think you can take that out with Carry. the guidance that we've got. I mean, right now, yes, I would say yes. And the body and cr cruiser cameras I'm going to be applying for a grant tomorrow for those. Okay. But we won't know back from that until we... No, we won't. <laughs> By the time we have to make a decision. Uh, and yeah. And Justin may happen. Free cash, or I mean, we've got his this. work done to submit free cash. Yeah, so he's submitting it as the, of today. Uh, t today or tomorrow morning. Yeah. And if he's heading off to a meeting, whether he could get it in in time or not, but mm -hmm. that's about where it was going to be. He was looking for a, a, a few other things that he might be able to pull in, but um, so it might be slightly higher. But it didn't sound like he was talking about. Really Probably five to ten thousand. Mm. So we don't know yet exactly where we stand with the budget. With the but we haven't had the figure very long. But yeah, we need, still need to work on how much has to go to the budget. Yeah. So then the rest goes to capital. Well, we so have about thirty-seven thousand dollars we can take off of that number right now. Without. What's that? Well, we've taken off uh, 25 for 
Oh, yeah. OSHA. 20 for the computers. Oh, that's that's in the total down there? Yeah. Okay. We've mm -hmm. taken off right. an, almost another 20, 20 for the sally port. 55. But we've added eight maybe for the pull barn door and lighting. So, you know, it's roughly 36,000. So we're down below, you know, around 290 two ish. Where you have about the 16 for the, uh, the gable ends and siding over there? Oh, yeah, that's, that's got to go over there. Okay, no, that adds it back up. So let's just walk through the capital stabilization articles. Okay? Yeah. So just sort of first first <coughs> go through um, the select board table for $6,100. That would just replace what we currently have. Yeah. It's a nice to have, but not necessary. Yeah, we can. So that can go. Yeah. Freezer, body cameras. All right, so the body cameras I'm applying for that uh, the grant. So what, do you want to keep it on? I mean, we should probably talk about if we want to keep it on there or take it off. Well, maybe put a question mark right now. Okay. And I'm a little concerned with what uh, the communicate. Is that for 19 if you had a figure in that you'd be looking for something to fix the communications? That would be, in no, 19? It would be for 20. 2020. Okay. So, right, so the um, OSHA capital for 25 can come out? Yeah. Completely? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because capital is over 10, right? So if it's under 10, then it's kind of operating. So. Yeah. So Marlowe, on locating and mapping the drain manholes and catch basins, is that something that we can pay for under the, uh, the um, MS4 money? Yeah, I see that. That has changed kind of since I submitted this. Yeah, uh, we did really well under the 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 money that was earmarked for the stormwater MS4 stormwater the first year. Uh, if we recall, there's 390,000 for the first five years of the new permit. So, yes, the intent is to map the rest of the the drain system uh, in, inside and outside the uh, the zone and get it under our layers of GIS as water and sewers done. So yes, that actually could be taken out. Okay. Because we've already got the money in place for it. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. Um, Hopkins Academy cafeteria equipment replacement. We should talk to the school committee before doing anything about, with that. Yeah. Um, Twenty thousand for the computers can come out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sally port for nineteen five is already paid for. And the appraiser's software and hardware went from the twenty thousand down to eighteen thousand. And is that different than the eight thousand article that they already have? Yes. Yeah, so you need eighteen from twenty to eighteen. Okay. So we've actually taken quite a bit out. So can we get this sheet redone, this one page, before our next meeting? Sure. Okay. Um, the evidence locker is over there in the far right called Other. Yeah, I think that there's enough money left over in the articles so we can pay for that there. Okay. I think. It's not, it's not something we swept uh, back in. Right. Uh, okay. David, on the municipal building, you have $3,000 for front entry and carpet replacement. Under other, I think that could come out of general maintenance. I'm not that, sure why that was. That $3,000 there? Yeah, that you have for this year. Oh. Okay, so I can put that over here. Okay. It can go to other, you said? <laughs> it is under other right now. But I, I think that can come out of our operating, our building maintenance budget. Oh, it's in. Okay. It's under uh, raising appropriate. Is that the one you're talking about? That yeah. Thing that was okay. Yeah. Then yeah. we have another other way far right. So. 
All right, so yeah. for right, right now I have 423000 for the borrowing column. And I've got 23900 for the capital stabilization. Two three eight nine hundred. Yeah. What's that again? Two three eight two hundred thirty eight thousand nine hundred dollars. Sorry, I'm just reading numbers. Off. So yeah, my, I mean, my biggest question in the free cash and what we could do is the borrowing and how that gets incorporated into the budget. Because I know we have loan payments for previous items and how do we factor that in? Where does that come out of? That's one thing in the budget where I don't understand where it comes out of, so. Okay. Um, I can always talk to you about that later too. Where loan payments come out of? Yeah. It's a, it's a budgeted item and mm -hmm. your Future and years. Yeah. yeah, I mean we know how much it is each year. So any yeah. anything new in the borrowing now goes in addition. Will be above, goes above that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you guys are good again. We have thank, you. So thank, you. Yeah. thank you. 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 So just just for sake of argument. Yeah. So I'm not saying these numbers are true, but let's say that we have nothing. Here. Capital stabilization. We know that we have twenty nine thousand in capitalization. But let's say that we have capital stabilization. Mm -hmm. Let, let's just say that for the zero, we'd have to push all of that capital stabilization expenses, which I have coming up to two hundred thirty three thousand nine hundred. Is that the figure that you got there, Chris? I got two thirty six. I got two fifty eight. Somebody told me two thirty eight. <laughs> well, that's because I added in the, the sixteen two. and the eight. Oh no, the sixteen was above for fifteen. <laughs> oh. It's in twice. It's in. It was in twice. Yeah. Oh, that sixteen was in twice. <clears throat> yeah. Oh. So yeah, so you're probably right. And I added, added fifteen, not sixteen, because I went for the lower oh. number. Well, okay, so I got about two hundred thirty thousand in capital stabilization, yeah. which yeah. may not be there, and I've got about four hundred and twenty-three thousand in borrowing. If we put them together, that's about six fifty in borrowing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, um, Linda and I can run the numbers and see how if that works. But how does the borrowing get paid for? It would have to be a debt exclusion. A debt yeah. exclusion, okay. Yeah. And that wouldn't appear anyway. We're talking about two years down the road yeah. before that would hit the tax rate. Which is also when we're doing it. A big problem. Bar big borrowing. Yeah. But, but that's already factored in, too. Yeah. Um, so the borrowing would you to take the generators out? Then? Yeah, take the generator out. Chief, the fire chief just said he doesn't want that. There in that year. Oh. So, but on the other hand, if we have more money in capital stabilization from the free cash, we could always shift either the fire skid unit or the um, council on aging ban into that column. Right. Correct something that we don't need to borrow for, we can pay for now. Yeah, our policy is if we have the cash, we, we pay for things with cash. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. right. I don't want a limited amount, number, and again, this whole has to fit together, and we'll work on this. So, so there's two parts of borrowing. One is how much can we, how much we, can we borrow without raising taxes and how much yes. with raising taxes. And the without means it's borrowed within the left. Right. Yeah. And the way um, we do that is take the current borrowing and spread it out further. So it's like, yes, so yeah, yeah. we can, because we already are 
there's making a, those there's payments a within the levy, basically. Right. We we try and keep the amounts that we pay within the levy about 150, 160 thousand a year, and those are all uh, amounts that um, you know we 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 pay that. And if we don't have a lot of things being borrowed under there, we still pay those amounts and they, they come off mm -hmm. the schedule earlier. If we have more things to put in sooner, such as when we bought the land last fall. Mm -hmm. We bought the land, put the 400000 and we didn't raise the amount, we just spread the payments out further. We can, there's a limit to how long you can do that. Yes. So, because 400000 was, was a large amount all at once. Mm -hmm. And um, so, it's, it's, a, it's a balancing act here. Um, I think ideally, um, a long-term plan, it'd be nice to take the items that are 6,000, 15,000, and do things like that and throw them in and put them in as borrowing in, within the levy so you're not throwing items that size onto a ballot to be voted on. Mm -hmm. And you save the larger items for, do, for asking taxpayers if they want to raise their taxes in order to buy this $100,000 piece of equipment. Mm -hmm. So, and, but not to have them picking over all, I mean, a lot of these little things, I would just like to see them bundled up and say, and, and then do the borrowing within the levy so that the town meeting itself can make the decision that yes, we want to buy that and we want to borrow it, and then you're done. Mm -hmm. At the end of that meeting, you're not throwing it out mm -hmm. for some more. So part of what we've been trying to do with the budgeting, with the borrowing planning is come, to get that into a budget just as other items are in a budget. What is our plan? How much do we want to spend a year and then back into what we're borrowing for, mm -hmm. as opposed to adding up everything that we need to buy and figure out how we're trying to buy it? I know yeah, that. Yeah, 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 that's what we're trying <laughs> to do. Yeah. So, so, how much do you want to spend? How much do you want to yeah, borrow? And, yeah. then, and then you prioritize. I, I can't always do that. Can I take your temperature a little bit? Okay, so rather than having one, two, three, four, five, six, seven debt exclusion ballot articles. Um, can we bundle these together? So a certain amount for vehicles, a certain amount for buildings, a certain amount for um, uh, equipment. I guess those are the three categories. So the other thing is, is uh, when you submit that, it doesn't really have to go through a vote, yeah. and yeah. you take the risk of losing. Yes. And it throws the capital plan off balance too, if it's rejected. Mm -hmm. Well, that's true of anything we present, sure, yeah. proposed but to the budget. Everything comes out last year. year. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so I'm, I'm just asking, what do you think? Do you think it's, it's a, a you know? Risking is it a good thing to separate them due to that voting risk, or is it a bad thing? Well, this is something I'm, I'm thinking about. Something that Chris has uh, asked us to start thinking about. We were going to try this in a couple of years, but maybe now is the time to do it. Which is, is that there's a certain amount that we borrow every year, which is capital related. Mm -hmm. and we tie that in. In an ideal world, we tie that in with debt that's already coming off. So then, and I'm just going to make up numbers here. We're borrowing a quarter of a million dollars every year in order to cover capital, just one big capital borrowing, mm -hmm. and that that's how we manage it and manage our capital program forever. Uh, I don't think we're right there at this point, but I'm just trying to think: Does then is now a good time to start introducing the concept? So rather than one capital borrowing article for capital in general that we would present, say three, one for vehicles at a certain amount, one for uh, buildings at a certain amount, and one for equipment at a certain amount. I think you'd have a better shot at it through the town than doing each individual because I think someone might say, well, what do you really need that for? And can you get, get you, you can get it something cheaper. Yeah. They might pick and choose, you know, I, I don't know, I think that, that you have more problems. I think if people can understand that they you need a certain dollar amount. In the, yeah, you know, and that's one side, and the other side is, are people going to be critical because of the lack of transparency? That's true. Well, nowadays... Do you want a menu or whatever? Here's the then menu. again, these meetings are lasting so, so long, and so... My, my suggestion is, as far as the lack of transparency, I mean, now that we have these on the, 
uh, at any time they can watch these on YouTube, right, and, 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 and watch it if they really are interested. But to get these meetings to move along a little bit, I mean, the last one was a little <laughs> bit too much. <laughs> And the town meeting will talk about each of these items still. Right. It's not like town meeting is right. going to say, let's yeah. just spend 200000 on vehicles. They're going to still have to vote for each one or discuss each one. Somebody could make a motion to remove something from that. Even voluntarily. That's yeah. like someone steps up and says, we don't need that anymore. Yeah. yeah. Or, yeah. So or, if you imagine the article, there would be a menu of capital. Mm -hmm. Uh, requests which would be borrowing and non-borrowing items would be the whole thing and then the, uh, when we get to the motions we might have four motions borrowing one borrowing two borrowing three cash for the rest mm -hmm. uh, okay. yeah I, I mean that's that something like a good idea yeah something we're gonna I got two two heads nodding hey my fall flat in your face they could yeah, yeah. yeah. I could see it both ways, actually. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I see it working, I see it not working, too. Yeah. But people want to know what they're voting on. It's their taxes. It's like it was in the old days. When we get some people in the town meeting. The old farmers yeah. in there. They oh, yeah. question everything. Mm -hmm. And you still be in the air for three days. <laughs> well, you people don't remember. Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, certainly we're doing this. <laughs> You know, we've, we've talked about if we were able to fund the capital stabilization fund itself and then we're going to town meeting and just spending, like we did last year when we had the extra free cash available, we used that 275000 or so right at town meeting floor, moved it in capital stabilization, and then we voted, let's spend this out of capital stabilization. And we spent that money right down then and there. So people do get to vote on them. So if we did a similar... It would be if, if we could identify a funding source for that, and I don't know whether we can even do it as a general. Uh, can we do a? You know, can we fund it? Can we ask people to do a debt exclusion override to fund a capital account to be spent at town meeting for more? No. <laughs> hey, I guess we could try it. Yeah, or yeah, or, 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 or rope in some other source of funding as sure. it comes along, but. You may have to Give specifically shot, identify what you're going to use it for, the too. Hell? You're, you're not talking about a blank check, basically. No. <laughs> I hope not. I think we're talking about trying to s rely on what's within the levy instead of trying to get, you know, exclusions and spending more than what's within that levy if we can. And not relying on free cash to be like this bonus to then pay for everything. That's another way to do it. Instead of saying we're spending 160,000 a year out of, uh, to, on borrowings within the levy, we could vote to increase that budget item to 250,000 or 300,000, and then be able to fit more things in there. I hadn't thought of that. I mean, it's straight, just increasing that within the levy mm -hmm. line item, mm -hmm. enough yeah, to yeah, cover yeah. a lot more items. Something's yeah. going to give. Well, you're, exactly. You're, you're, exactly. Out, you're maxed out right now. So right. what's going to bring that in, you've got to right. give up something. But when you're doing it to mm -hmm. pay borrowing, you're actually fitting more into it than if you have to, if you want to buy all those items out right. free, out of right. cash this year, we're going to buy a borrowing plan mm -hmm. and keep it even and lower over over a number of years. We still would have to and borrow. Eventually that catch. That it, catch eventually it eventually would come. It eventually would. The old credit card game. <laughs> yeah. You're going you're gonna to have to pay eventually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it Is sounds it like options? Linda and I have some homework to do. Yeah. Uh, What's in your wallet? Yeah. What's in my wallet? <laughs> well, I have something just to add, just want to throw yeah. out there to add to your <laughs> thoughts. Okay, the uh, land that you're looking at doing through CPA. What should plan B if that CPA says no? Should go to Woodchuck possibly, but that requires a uh, co-vote by Conservation Commission. Um, I think it's a good piece of property. I mean, I think you okay. know, or a hundred thousand for for that many acres on in front of the water is good. Mm -hmm. So I think that's probably worth it. 
I just don't know if it's without at this late hour. I don't know if you're going to get that to pass CPA. So I, I want to think about plan so B. So you're, you're meeting on Monday. Monday, yes, the next 17th. Monday. Yeah. If we if we get a quorum. Okay. I mean, okay. if it's a straight vote at town meeting just to buy that land. I mean, we have so to figure out how, where to pay for it from. Right. I so mean, we bought the land last year. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if it's possible to do something similar with that land as a town if it doesn't go through CPA. It's it's a it sounds like a great deal. Mm -hmm. it sounds like a great deal, but I just I think I have a feeling that you might run into some roadblocks, and I just don't know. And I think we need to think about Plan B. Mm -hmm. okay. For next year. <coughs> that's that's un yeah. possible. Yeah. I don't know who's plan you know, if they're planning on coming and giving a good presentation, you know, on uh nobody came to the last one regarding the land. Right. So they kicked it out. Right. Well I'll, I'll talk to the proponents. I can't yeah. be there that particular night, so uh, and I'll, I'll investigate looking into a plan B if we have to. Yeah. Okay. So just coming out of here, I think we could wrap it up essentially for tonight. But just uh, moving forward is we're going to update the spreadsheet and then get some better clarity on the free cash number. And then also maybe look at our borrowing and what we could do there. I don't right. know how to, how to do you, say do you want, it. Do you want to come in and work? We could, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's, because there's so many different directions to, to go in. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. Okay. A lot of things to look at. Um, we well, we'll meet first. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anything else you guys have? We do moving forward, and then next meeting is on the twenty fourth. What time? Five thirty. Five thirty. Uh, I believe. I'm just looking it up here. Is that two just, weeks? It's in two weeks. Yep. Because David is not here next week. And at that meeting, we'll have to make our recommendations, correct? For the yep. special town meeting? Yep. <clears throat> School department may or may not be here. We need three, correct? The school department? Oh, the school department. I yeah. said you may, you no. may or may not be here. Yeah, we're gonna see if we can get the school department okay. here. I'm sorry. I just oh, I'll, you be, right. uh, okay. I'll be here. I'll be here. I'm the crypto. Right? Okay. Okay. Great. Right. Yeah. I thought he was talking about himself. He said this. Yeah. This cool is something. Yeah. 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 Won't be here. This cool. <laughs> the school. Yeah. Yes. 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 All right. Thank you all so much. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you all. Yes. Good night, everyone at home. <laughs>